my Sears Tower. Good morning everyone, my name is Eric and this is the Get Me Out of Here vlog. We just checked out of the famous Hotel El Rancho here in Gallup, New Mexico. What an amazing stay it was last night at this historic hotel. Again, it was built in 1937 by R.E. Griffith, who was the brother of famous movie director, silent film director, D.W. Griffith. And this was a very popular spot for early Hollywood starlets. A lot of famous movie actors from the golden era of Hollywood between the 1930s and the 1960s graced the hallways of this beautiful ranch-style hotel here in Gallup. Now there's supposed to be a lot of ghost stories here at this hotel as well. We didn't have any paranormal experiences last night and to be honest, we had such a long day on Route 66 yesterday that it didn't even dawn on me that this place might be haunted but heard some interesting stories from the front desk. And before we move on down the road, I wanted to just get one last look of the lobby and the hallways here at this beautiful Hotel El Rancho. And I meant to say too, the final destination today will be Flagstaff, Arizona. So this is day, what day is this? Day six, I believe, of the Route 66 road trip. And today we'll be driving from Gallup, New Mexico to Flagstaff, Arizona, crossing into the great state of Arizona and exploring completely new territory for me as I move on west. And again, this is part of my grand move from Chicago to Phoenix, Arizona. So there's a lot coming on the way. So join us as we travel the Mother Road out of New Mexico and across Arizona. Here at the front is a plaque, the El Rancho Hotel dedicated to Max and Amelia Ortega, founders of present-day Ortega's Indian Stores and parents of present-day El Rancho owner Armand Ortega, 1988. So let's head inside this historic hotel. Right away, this is one of the most grandioso lobbies I've ever seen in any hotel that I've been at. You see this double staircase and this giant stone fireplace centered in the room oh this this is just magical it really is like straight out of a movie walking in here you've got elk heads adorning the walls and uh just look at this fireplace i mean it's you don't see this very often in most hotels across the united states you can actually smell the 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 burnt timber the the ash from it, so they definitely use this. I didn't see it in use yesterday when we checked in, but it definitely is still in use, this giant fireplace here in the lobby. And just look at that all around the perimeter. They have autographed pictures of famous Hollywood celebrities that stayed at this hotel. So I'm gonna go upstairs and just get a quick look at that. Go up the velvet red staircase. I don't recognize these faces, but a lot of golden age era Hollywood actors and actresses all along the walls. And they also have a lot of Native American paintings as well. I know the Navajo reservation is very close to the city of Gallup. Beautiful paintings. The Marx Brothers right there classic comedy trio here's a photo of betty grable i guess she stayed in room 237 there's a hotel room key right there on display behind the glass 
here's some photos of the movie The Desert Song. And we stayed in room two, uh, 222. Dennis Morgan was the star of that movie. That was the, the room we stayed in, the Dennis Morgan room last night. And I am not familiar with that movie, so I kind of want to see that now. Of course, you've got a lot of Burt Lancaster movies, another one of my all-time favorite actors. Starred in a lot of films. I think his last movie was Field of Dreams. And there's a signed picture of Humphrey Bogart, most famous for Casablanca. He's looking at you, kid. Catherine Hepburn, another signed photograph of Catherine Hepburn. Oh, Kirk Douglas. He just passed away a couple years ago. He lived to be, I think, like 101 years old. There's Jimmy Stewart, another one of my all-time favorite actors, and Dick Van Dyke. You know, Dick Van Dyke is still alive. He's in his mid-90s. He may be the only living actor or actress that I've seen on the walls here. Oh, wow, Spencer Tracy. That's cool. Another legend. Oh, and Errol Flynn, the original Robin Hood. Did a lot of swa swashbucklers. And here's another picture of Burt Lancaster. One of my favorite Burt Lancaster movies is called The Crimson Pirate. I believe it came out in the 1950s, but that is a classic film. If you haven't seen it, check out The Crimson Pirate. Oh, wow, and James Cagney. That's awesome. He started in a lot of... Probably more famous for gangster movies in the mid-20th century. Just amazing. If walls could talk at the Hotel El Rancho. Now I stated earlier if walls could talk and supposedly, supposedly they still do. This place is supposed to be haunted. Ghost Adventures actually filmed here. Zach Baggins, the show on Travel Channel a couple years ago. And apparently this room, 214, the Henry Fonda room was, was full of activity here at the hotel. And this is pretty wild. Talking to the girl at the front desk, she said that this room has a lot of paranormal activity. The room 221, the Dale Robertson room. And this is the room right next door to the one my brother and I stayed at last night. We were in the Dennis Morgan room 222. But they said they've had tables vibrate, things move on their own accord here in this room 221. So this is one of the more active rooms. If you're into ghost stories, you might want to look into booking this one. That's crazy. It was right next door to the one my brother and I stayed in. We didn't have any anything go on last night. It was a very comfortable sleep, but that that's, that's pretty wild. A very nice stay last night here at the El Rancho Hotel. Love the Western theming with the bedding. And look at this. They've got arrows for the lamppost. I even noticed there's arrows below this sofa. You can feel the history in the room. You really can. They've really been going out with the cowboy western theming. There's a cowboy hat and a lasso, a horseshoe bottle opener. And the room we stayed in was the Dennis Morgan room. I don't know a lot about Dennis Morgan. He was a actor back in the golden era of Hollywood. Here's a poster of a movie he was in, The Desert Song which came out in the early 1940s. Dennis Morgan also starred in the classic movie, The Great Ziegfeld, which debuted in 1936. So he was definitely a popular star back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And I love that they pay tribute to that golden age of Hollywood here at the Hotel El Rancho. It's a important part of its history. Also found this older beer bottle opener here in the bathroom and check this out. I've never seen this before, but there's a wine corkscrew, a wine bottle opener as well inside the, the beer bottle opener. So that was pretty cool. I've never seen that before in a hotel. And check out this curtain. This is freaking awesome. There's a neon Hotel El Rancho shower curtain beautiful tile. I don't know how old that tile is, but it looks like it could be original and just a lovely shower that they have provided here in the Dennis Morgan room. 
The bathroom mirror also has this signature turquoise stone that you see all over New Mexico. Well, we got to keep rolling. A lot to do and see today, crossing into Arizona on Route 66. I also wanted to note that apparently the third floor and room 308 in particular is one of the more paranormal hotspots here in this hotel. So if you want to stay here, you might get a chance to meet one of these famous Hollywood celebrities that have since passed after all. All right, let's hit the road. Good job, Connor. Good job. Sounded good. You're playing dead song. <laughs> they also have an amazing Indian store, Ortegas. Gotta love the classic cigar shop Indian there. The wooden carving standing out front. And perhaps one of the most famous actors and a U.S. president that stayed here, Ronald Reagan. Stayed here several times at the Hotel El Rancho. There's also a photo of former president George H.W. Bush as well. And these are both in front of the restaurant that they have here. And almost walked right by this, they've got a shrine for John Wayne, who also stayed here at this hotel. A lot of old pictures of him. Arguably one of the most famous Western actors, well, played Westerns in the heyday of Hollywood. Before leaving Gallup, wanted to see this giant kachina, which is an ancestral spirit of the Pueblo Indians. They act as communicators between humans and the gods. This is really cool. Look at that. And you see, I've seen a lot of these throughout New Mexico. So it's a, it's again a lot of a lot of the culture and heritage with the Pueblo and the the native tribes in this region. Dude, it's the Galoop. I see it. Check this out. It's the Galoop or the Gallop Loop. A sculpture of a warped Route 66. That is so cool. And it has since been coined as the Galoop, the Galoop of Gallup. That is so awesome. Boy, if the road was like that, that would be one wild ride. I tried, just uh, not enough speed. Yellow horse, horsey, elk jerky. Well, we made it to Arizona. We're right on the border, just crossed over, and we're at the chief yellow horse trading post. And there's a giant teepee gift shop. So we're gonna go inside and see what they have in store before driving further into the Grand Canyon State, Arizona, my new home. That is awesome. They've got a Medicine Man Zoltar machine in the entryway. Unfortunately, it's out of order. And a giant wooden kachina here as well to greet us at the entryway. Look at this gift shop. This is one of the coolest gift shops I've seen so far on the Route 66 trip. So much to look at. Oh, this is amazing. They got all these Kachinas as well, too, of these little figurines, these spirits, these Navajo spirits. A couple of these are eating watermelon. Lots of beautiful Native American pottery. All kinds of unique designs. And behind me, you can take a decorative arrow home, too. And there's a Kachina doll display with information on these spirits that originated with the Hopi Indian tribe. We also have a lot of Route 66 history and information here as well.
And here is something I've never seen before. In Arizona, snowman. He's all melted. <laughs> it's awesome. So I am moving to Phoenix, Arizona from Chicago, Illinois. That's why my brother is road tripping with me. So I'm going to have to I have to get used to this. I'm used to a lot of snow in the wintertime. So this is, this is new to me. <laughs> this is awesome. I love this. They also have sand globes instead of snow globes here in Arizona and rubber cactus pens and rattlesnake head keychains. Something else I've never seen grow a cowboy. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of weird. Grow a cowboy. And here we are, welcome to Arizona, the Grand Canyon State, my new home in the seventh out of eight states along Route 66. Well, we've made it to Petrified Forest National Park here in eastern Arizona. Look at this. This is Tippany Point, and this is the painted desert in front of us here in the National Park. Wow, this is absolutely breathtaking. It's almost like a mini Grand Canyon here at Petrified Forest National Park. And this is the painted desert all behind me. And the iron in the sediment is what causes all the, the vibrant red color that you see. It's like rust. It's iron in the minerals that's rusting in the, in the hot desert sun. It creates all these beautiful colors of red and purple. This is amazing. I, I was not expecting this at all on this trip to see a national park like this. Just stepped inside the Painted Desert Inn in the national park and this is incredible. This hotel used to serve Route 66 here on the rim of the Painted Desert Canyon. This is awesome. This used to be a cafe and a popular stop along Route 66. So we are still on the Mother Road, even here in a national park. Look at this. They even have an old cafe counter with booths. Apparently this structure was built in the 1920s. Just imagine roadside People traveling the mother road, sitting on these stools, grabbing a burger, grabbing a sandwich, maybe a milkshake or a Coca-Cola, right here along the rim of this canyon in the Painted Desert. Look at that. There's an old photo right there of the, the soda fountain counter right here. I mean, look at this, right out the window, right there is the Painted Desert. Talk about a room with a view. There's even petroglyphs from ancient tribes found here in the park on display. Look at that. And just stepped outside and they've got like an open patio here at this inn. Look at that, with, the, with some of the best views in the world. What's amazing is a lot of the wood that you see here is petrified wood. The original framework here was all built out of petrified wood from the surrounding landscape here for the inn. This is, I love it when historic structures use um, natural resources in the surrounding area. It just kind of, it makes it that much more authentic and really just makes it more special to me. And this, this is the case here at the historic in in this national park this is amazing just blowing my mind i just noticed these really cool symbols on the back of the stools and i don't know what 
that's supposed to be. It looks like a lion or some kind of creature. Looking up at the ceiling, I just noticed the glass that they have, the stained glass. That is incredible. Very beautiful, just all along the ceiling here in the back lobby. And I notice a lot of, I'm guessing, Navajo symbols, maybe Native American symbols on here and there. Again, is that symbol that was on the back of the stools in the cafe. And there's the Desert Inn from outside. And right behind me is just a spectacular view of the painted desert. Words cannot convey how beautiful this is. And of course, Petrified National Forest is the only national park that historic Route 66 passes through. In fact, this is where the original alignment of the road was. You can see the telephone poles stretching outward. That is where the original Route 66 ran along. And they've got an old jalopy, an old car here to commemorate Route 66 here at this national park. This is awesome. So yeah, here we are, the old automobile here in the desert. It's not very hot. In the... That's not as bad as I thought it would be. Probably fry up some burgers on that. Yeah, this is so cool. Out here in the desert, posing by an old. I'm not sure what kind of car that would have been. I think that's a little newer than a Model T. Yeah, this is so cool. Look, you can see inside. But yeah, a piece of the Mother Road right here in Arizona in this wonderful national park. So this is a point called Newspaper Rock, and below are ancient petroglyphs or carvings in the stone that ancient Puebloan tribes carved into 650 to 2,000 years ago. You can kind of make them out way down there. Ancient petroglyphs. Oh yeah, and right there on the side. There we go, right there in the side of the rock. You can see just hundreds of carvings from ancient tribes. That is, oh, that's phenomenal. That is so cool. There's a few more right there alongside that boulder. Those are the clearest. Those are the clearest. You just moved it from the way you saw it before. There's a bunch of ravens. There's a murder of ravens just going crazy over there. They just, they just flew into this rock outcropping. You can hear them. More hundred, six hundred and fifty. I took a picture down there, but I don't know if I'm going to go through that thing. It's like these, a person screaming. I know, these ravens sound like a person screaming over here. Ah! I've never heard a raven make that noise before.
It's hard to believe because this is a desert now, but 200 million years ago, this was a tropical forest, a swamp. And you can see there is remnants right there. That is petrified wood here in the desert of Arizona. That's incredible. It's amazing to think 200 million years ago, dinosaurs roamed this very land and there are still remnants of it all this time later. Oh yeah, you can see all of this petrified wood right there in the distance. Prehistoric forests. The ever-changing world. Apparently they had a giant petrified log that was up on a pedestal and it has come crashing down since then. That, that happened back in 2005. Look right there, petrified wood. Up close and personal. That's amazing. 200 million year old wood just sitting right there that prehistoric creatures most likely touched walked on just mind-blowing ahead is the blue mesa basin trail it's a trail that will take you all the way out into the heart of petrified forest national park and look at all this wood down here too it's just scattered all over this old, looks like an old river basin of some type. Oh yeah. But it is, uh, this is, it just reminds me so much of the Badlands of South Dakota. I guess these are also called Badlands, these, these desert-like sand dunes. Now we've got a lot to cover today, so we're not gonna be walking this full trail, just wanted to get a glimpse of it, but, uh, one of these days I'll come back and do a full hike now that I'll be a resident of Arizona. This will be definitely a doable weekend trip, but just amazing. Look how breathtaking these landforms are. piece of wood right there in the heart of this canyon. And right along this lookout, there is petrified wood right here up close and personal. That's insane. You can see, yeah, it's like crystallized. That's amazing. So there you go. Petrified wood right here up close and personal, it's like rock, but it's wood. You can see like all the grains, but it's crystallized. That is just, a, that's so mind blowing to me. Ancient wood. Here is the Agate Bridge, a prehistoric tree that was washed in a riverbed, which prevented its decay and it's still here. And it's, it's actually a bridge now. In fact, a hundred years ago, people would walk across this prehistoric tree, and you can see in 1917, they've actually uh, applied some reinforced concrete below the tree to ensure its stability and it, and it can continue to span this ravine for, for a longer period of time. But this is it, the Agate Bridge, a prehistoric tree that's spanning this small ravine. Now they say that water created it, and water will someday destroy a gate bridge. This will not last forever. Someday it will probably get washed away again down this river basin when when, it, when the desert does get rain and, and of course over time. So this is really cool to see. And no, you can't walk across it now. They do have barriers on either side of this prehistoric tree. This is Rainbow Forest section of the National Park. And look at all of this petrified wood. I've been saying that word a lot. But look at this, it's just crazy. It's 
Feels like wood on the outside, but crystals and rock on the inside. So weird. Jeez, look at the size of these logs. This is amazing. 200 million year old logs, trees, wood, whatever you want to call it. You know, again, dinosaurs roamed the earth when these trees were alive. This is crazy. Look at this, this prehistoric log. We could just sit on it and hang out. Sitting on an ancient log. It's pretty crazy, right? It's just so mind blowing to me. This this prehistoric tree right here. And it still feels like wood on the surface, but on the inside, right here, it's all crystallized. It feels like a rock. So it's like a rock on the inside, but a tree, but, a, but wood on the outside of this tree. This is, gosh, that's amazing. I just, I'm trying to wrap my mind around all this. And this used to be a prehistoric forest. This used to be a like, a, like a swamp, like a tropical forest. And now it's just an arid desert. The earth is always changing. It's just, you can't stop. You can't stop the change. And uh, it'll continue to change long after humans have left the earth. Or, or before the sun swallows it up in, I think, billions of years. But anyway, just mind blowing. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Look at this, we found a little lizard here in the desert. Look how colorful he is. That is awesome. He's bright green and blue, yellow feet. And he's really brave. He's not running away. Hey, buddy. He's looking for food. Looking for some food out here? Jumped off and went for a fly a little bit ago. It's pretty hot. Pretty hot out here. Just left Petrified Forest National Park. Here's a museum and they've got dinosaurs on display out front with lots of petrified wood that you can purchase and take home with you. And some wigwams. Right here, welcome to Holbrook. They've got a petrified wood totem pole. And there's more dinosaurs in Holbrook, Arizona, the rock shop. In Holbrook, Arizona at Aliberto's Mexican Food, they claim to have the best burritos in town, Route 66. So we didn't get a burrito. I got a, we got chimichangas. So here is a chimichanga. I guess chimichangas are like the official or maybe the unofficial state food of Arizona. Arizona loves their chimichangas. So that is exactly what Connor and I are trying today. Right, so it's a beef chimichanga at Aliberto's in Holbrook, Arizona. It's not bad. Gets the job done. We're starving, so we'll eat anything. But yeah, this is good. It's not the best I've had, but it is good. It's tasty. It gets the job done. They claim to be the best in town here in Holbrook. Yeah, it's great. If you need a break off the mother road, come to Aliberto's here in Holbrook. Look at this. In Holbrook, it's the world's largest Route 66 art. They've got the entire road laid out and listed here, starting in Chicago at Lake Michigan. 
and it's even appropriate. There's a dead body in a plastic bag right next to Chicago. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. What's cool too is they also have Petrified Forest National Parks map on here as well, which is just east of Holbrook. We just got through that. That is so cool they have that here too. And of course they've got a dinosaur mural because Holbrook loves their dinosaurs. Lots of dinosaur fossils discovered all over this area. This used to be a prehistoric forest. Way to, a lot of poop. <laughs> way to watch your feet. <laughs> there is dog crap all over the wall here. What the heck? What's going on? Butt is appropriate. I thought something smelled. Look at all this dog poop all over the ground here. This is disgusting. So watch your feet here at the Route 66 uh, road map here in Holbrook because there is dog doo-doo everywhere. I really, I don't think I stepped any. But man, it, it, it stinks and it's like, yeah, this is disgusting. So we're gonna hit the road. There's the Wigwam Motel here in Holbrook, Arizona. One of three in the United States. You can sleep in a Wigwam. Of course, they've got the rabbit mobile here as well. This is an old rabbit car from the 1970s. And it's got rabbit ears on it too here. Going with the theme. And this is what you can expect to find inside the curiosity shop here at Here It Is. And they've got lots of t-shirts you can advertise and wear it every day. Just saw that they have rabbit droppings for sale. So if you're hungry for some rabbit droppings, you can stop on by and get some hair. <clears throat> I mean here, here. <laughs> so apparently they have a museum in here. Here's James Dean as the doorman and a bunch of kind of antiques and unique items in here. It looks like a little bit of the history of here it is. It's been here since 1949 and still owned by the original owners. The, well, it remains within the family, I should say. But this is so cool, look at this. And they have a big collection of rabbits, which makes sense, goes with the theme. Oh yeah, it's like a stitched, um, yeah, I don't know what you call it. It's like a stitched, some kind of stitched artwork, but look, it's Thumper from Bambi. Yeah, really cool. So they have a small museum in the back full of all kinds of antiques and history on this amazing establishment, this old gift shop and curiosity shop that's been here since 1949. Here it is. And look, they even have John Lasseter, creator of Toy Story and Cars, Pixar Cars, uh, has an autograph here on the wall as well. So we have these ominous looking clouds straight ahead of us on Route 66, heading west towards Winslow, Arizona. It looks like, I don't know what you call them, like a cloud burst, where you just get a burst of rain that is focused on one spot. Here we are standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. It's an Eagles song and they made it famous, so they put a statue here in Winslow, Arizona, hmm. on the downtown corner. Is this supposed to be Don Henley? There is a flatbed for it. It's a boomer thing, but there's no one. Standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, such a fine sight to see. Did I get it? Yeah, you got it. Though. Yes, I got it that time. <laughs> I kept messing up the, the last lyric there. All right.
So we have landed here outside of Winslow, Arizona. And you can see there's a space theme right on the other side of this building is the best well-preserved meteor impact site in the world. It's the meteor crater here just west of Winslow, Arizona. Behind me is a space shuttle capsule, a replica of that. And look, it's an astronaut here from NASA. Thank you for your service here. He's standing guard, ready to explore the meteor crater site. And you can see he's got a meteor crater space museum sticker here as well. So thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. We also have a visitor from another planet here as well. Connor, um, no, I'm not talking about Connor. I'm talk <laughs> talking about the alien, this guy right here. Just in case you're confused, there, there's an alien here too outside the the meteor crater site. He looks like he wants to take you somewhere. Let's go. <laughs> it's the hair. So there's like, I guess a rabbit that is going to blast us into space. This is amazing. This is like Disney World kind of technology here. There's a theater where the, the seats move. And I don't know how long this is, but we're going to view this and then actually step outside into the impact zone. This. Uh, is totally un unexpected. This is amazing. This is freaking awesome. Okay, that was amazing. There was like a really cool simulation movie that we just saw. Something like that I was not expecting. Something you'd see like at a, a Disney theme park or a Universal theme park. So that was that was a lot of fun. So expect to before you even see the meteor crater itself. There's there's actually a lot of fun movies and things to see here at the location as well. There's Jackie the Jackalope. So this is incredible. They got a little museum here before seeing the actual impact crater. And here on display is an actual fragment. It's the largest discovered fragment of the original 150 foot long meteor that created the crater right outside this museum. Look at this. And you can just, it's just here on display. You can touch it. You can touch a piece of the meteor that created that. Oh, it's magnetic. So yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That's so cool. And then same with all these here. Wow. That's amazing. So these would all range within like four, three, four hundred dollars a year down to little like two dollar pieces. At 11 miles per second, a meteor raced through the solar system towards Earth. A lot of the lights change. And shock waves were created as it approached from the east. Hurricane force winds threw 175 million tons of material in all directions. The shock of impact melted most of the meteor and spread it with a large plume of debris. This is incredible. Look at this. the best preserved impact crater in the world here in Arizona. Wow. I keep walking to the top, but that is, I am. So the meteor was 150 feet long when it impacted Arizona 61,000 years ago and created this crater. This crater is one mile across, one mile wide. This is just incredible. The best preserved meteorite impact crater in the world right here off Route 66 in Arizona. Just this massive crater. Just think of things, things coming out of outer space, meteorites, comets that can strike our planet, strike the Earth, and just create these massive changes to the geology. And it's just awe-inspiring, you know? There's, there's so much more to it.
to the universe. So it's just crazy to think how, even though 61,000 years ago, I, I can't even fathom, that's a long time ago, but in, in the hindsight of the history of our planet, it's really not that long ago at all. There's nothing greater than this. Well, we have a dilemma here. You can see this is called twin arrows, but we have an arrow down. One of the arrows has fallen. And I have no idea when this, this must have just happened recently, but one of the arrows has fallen at twin arrows. This is terrible. Look at that. We have a broken arrow here in Arizona. Oh no. That's insane. I, I guess they did, yeah. People stole remnants of the arrowhead because it's it's broken and it's it's missing. This is crazy. What happened to the arrow? So twin ar twin arrows is now numero uno standing. We've got one arrow still standing. One has fallen. And there's this whole abandoned gas station behind me. So I don't know if this will ever get repaired. Hopefully someone can fund and maybe i'll pitch some money into it too can we fund another arrow here can we repair twin arrows so it's true to its name oh, this is crazy this is totally new to me so yeah i mean i've been doing some research beforehand and didn't hear about the arrow being broken so this you can see it here folks there was one arrow standing one arrow down twin arrows is no more it's just one. You can see right here, somebody wrote Lone Arrow. Reference to the fallen arrow here. There's also the remnants of an old gas station along Route 66 next to Twin Arrows. It's getting pretty dark, so I'm not going to explore a lot here. Yeah, this these are awesome. Just left here to decay in the desert. This old gas tank looks like some kind of robot next to the Uno Arrow. Here's a gas tank or some kind of old petroleum tank with... Connor, my brother thinks it looks like Pee Wee Herman. I don't know. It's got some kind of character on it. And a bunch of very cool looking art, graffiti art down below. It's like two men enter, one man leave. The fight to the death pit. And uh, yeah, he does have kind of like a, like a buzz cut on the side. It's a hipster Pee Wee Herman here on the side of this tank. It's an abandoned tank. But uh, yeah, anyway, this is our last stop before making it into Flagstaff. We were hoping to see the Twin Arrows, but now it is a Lone Arrow, standing tall along I-40, which is still Route 66, but, but we take the freeway through most of Arizona because there really is no Route 66 remaining here.
Well, well, we made it to Flagstaff, Arizona, so we had to stop in at the Mother Road Brewing Company here in Flagstaff. I got the Daily Driver, Pale Ale, and you got uh, an award-winning IPA. Tower Station. A tower Station. So, Connor, cheers. We made it to Flagstaff. Cheers. We're getting towards the end of our journey. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal beer. How's that taste? It's good. Very good. Yes. Mother Road Brewing here in Flagstaff. Spectacular. Before walking out, check this out. Chicago, 1,658 miles to Flagstaff. That's how far we've come today. So I'm inside the Hotel Monte Vista in Flagstaff, Arizona. This place opened up on New Year's Day, 1927. And I've stayed in a lot of historic hotels over the years. I've logged them, documented them, shared my stays. This is one of the most unique hotels I've ever stayed at. It's just, it just, it's got a feel to it. And, you know, I've stayed at the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, a number of other hotels that are supposed to be haunted, but this hotel is supposed to be the most active, paranormal activity, haunted hotel in the state of Arizona. It opened up on New Year's Day, 1927, and a lot of celebrities have stayed here over the years. In fact, a lot of these rooms are named after famous Hollywood celebrities. This is the Jane Russell room. Behind me is the Debbie Reynolds room. That was Princess Leia's mom in real life, Carrie Fisher. Both passed away recently. And I just booked the most haunted room <clears throat> in the most haunted hotel in the state of Arizona. My brother and I are staying in room 305. This is the John Bon Jovi Suite. I know the name is kind of weird for a historic hotel like this, but the John Bon Jovi Suite because they, they stayed here, John Bon Jovi stayed here once. But this is supposed to be the most paranormal active room in the Hotel Monte Vista. So let me show you inside real quick. No joke, this room is supposed to be haunted by the ghost of some woman who apparently sits in this rocking chair and the chair rocks by itself. And I'm gonna be sleeping in the far bed by the rocking chair. My brother, Connor, what's up, Connor? Hey. <laughs> I'll be sleeping here. And uh, we'll be staying the night here in the most haunted room, in the most haunted hotel, supposedly, in Arizona. So. Without further ado, this is me sitting in the rocking chair. And by the way, I hate rocking chairs. They freak me out. Um, I've been, I've, I've vlogged a lot of haunted locations throughout the United States, and I've been to a lot of haunted locations even before I vlogged. This one has me kind of just, I've got a weird vibe about this place. Um, but this is, uh, Creepy uh, creak to it. It's a fine chair, though. Well built chair. I'm not looking forward to this tonight. <laughs> I really am not. I'll be sleeping right here. But uh, if anything happens, I'm going to do the best I can to document this for you. Um, but yeah, here we are at the Hotel Monte Vista, just off Route 66. It's right outside here in downtown Flagstaff, Arizona. Well, we are all checked in at the Monte Vista Hotel here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Again, this is one of the most haunted hotels in the state of Arizona, and we are staying in the ha most haunted room of the most haunted hotel here in Arizona. We've got our bags inside, everything checked in. I wanted to say thanks for tagging along today. It's been an another, another amazing journey on Route 66, the mother road across the state of Arizona. And this is actually going to be the end of our journey in Flagstaff. I'm moving to Phoenix tomorrow, so my brother is helping me move in. Thank you, Connor. You're a rock star. I got his beers all night. Um, but this will be the end of this chapter of Route 66. Now, it's not done. We'll be finishing out the rest of Route 66 sometime this summer doing Flagstaff to Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles. But this is, for now, we got about 80% of Route 66 done. We tried to stay true to the Mother Road. It was a six-day journey, so we piled and packed a lot into 
six days, which I, I don't recommend. I think uh, a journey like Route 66 should probably be like a two week journey, which I would love to do someday. The 100 year anniversary of Route 66 is coming up in 2026. The Mother Road was created in 1926. So I'm hoping to maybe do another journey in the, in the coming couple years, but there's still gonna be more. The last leg is coming up, but I wanted to say thanks for tagging along. There's a lot more on the way. I'm moving to Arizona, I'm moving to Phoenix tomorrow. I, I can't wait to get, to get uh, exploring into the American Southwest. But anyway, this is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog. I'm gonna go, out, uh, go to bed here soon. Hopefully I don't see this creepy ghost rocking in the rocking chair later tonight. But if I do, I hope I can capture it and show it to you. But thanks for tagging along. This is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog. And it's time for me to get out of here.